Okay, so we're going to do some of the homework problems, and this is what I expect you to do first. Draw graphs. Uh, identify the rational zero. Uh, x equals negative 2 in this case. Um, you could, if you wanted to, you'll know the coefficient here is 1 and 8, so we could list out all the possibles. In this case, it would be plus or minus 8, uh, plus or minus 4, uh, plus or minus 2, and uh, plus or minus 1. And so we know that our correct solution, or one of the rational solutions, if it is rational, it's going to come from that group. And so let's go ahead and just uh, synthetically divide out negative 2. So take our coefficients 1, 2, 4, and 8. 1, negative 2, 0, 0, 4, and negative 8. Woo. All right, remainder 0. I knew that would happen because there was a 0 on the graph here. Go backwards to say constant. This is x. This is x squared. So I have x squared plus 4 as my factor here. I know it's a factor because the remainder is 0. My other factor, if I chose to write it, comes from here. It would be x plus 2. x minus the solution. So we could set that equal to 0. So we get x equals negative 2. Where we already knew that one. And we set this equal to 0. x squared plus 4 equals 0. x squared equals negative 4. Square both sides. Plus or minus. You get x equals plus or minus uh, 2i. So our other two switches are imaginary there. We have three stations. It's to the third power. That was to be expected. When it's to the third power, you want to get one rational root from the graph. Synthetically divide it out, take your answer, either use quadratic formula or just set equal to zero if it's an easier problem like that one. Let's try another one. First step, graph it. By the way, if you do find all the possible p over q here, it's just plus or minus one. Those are the only possible rational roots. We have a solution of x equals one here. So I'm going to synthetically divide out one. One, negative two, two, negative one. So 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1, and add it up to get 0. Okay, remainder is 0. I knew that would happen because I could tell from the graph it's a solution or a root. That's a constant. That's x. That's x squared. So I'll get x squared minus x plus 1. That's one of my factors. My other factor um, really comes from up here. I'm going to be the factor of uh, x minus 1. If I wanted to write it out, I could. I don't have to. If I could equal 0, you get x equals 1. Can't just set that equal to 0 and solve. Well, I guess I could. I'm essentially I'm doing quadratic formula here. So my coefficient zero a is 1, b is negative 1, c is 1. So I get uh, x equals negative 1 over 2 times 1 plus or minus square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4, times a, times c. We get negative 1 half, plus or minus, uh, square root of negative 3, all over 2, or in other words, uh, those two answers would be negative 1 half, plus or minus i, times square root of 3, over 2, because that negative inside the radical is really just an i. And so I have my solution. I have three of them with the third power on the one side. Now to the fourth power. I'd expect you to normally find two solutions from the graph, two rational solutions. If you look at those 18, factors of 18, 9, uh, 6, 3, 2, 1, um, and you can see visually on the graph that we have a solution at x equals 1, and we have a solution at x equals uh, negative 2. Those should both be solutions looking at the graph. So I'm going to synthetically divide both of them out one at a time, making this smaller each time I do this. So starting to the fourth power, I'm going to divide by one of these. It's going to end up being to the third power. Divide by the second one, it should be down to a quadratic, which is manageable. Let's take negative two first. It doesn't really matter which one I do first. I get one, one, seven, nine, negative eighteen. And then I get negative two, negative one, two, nine negative 18, negative 9, positive 18, and 0. 
Okay, so I have my remainder of zero. So that part is really no longer part of my problem. Now I'm taking this as my new part of the answer here. Now I'm going to take out this one. So I'm going to synthetically divide out one from my answer. It's very important. Um, I don't really need to go all the way to there because this is my last number. The zero does not count now while I'm doing this. I'm taking my answer. So I'm going to put some one there. So one times one times one times zero, zero, nine, nine, zero. Remainder is zero. So this is a constant. This is x. This is x squared. I have a factor. x squared is kind of silly x squared plus 9. I've got all the factors that be x minus 1. So I have to test 3 if I want to write them out. Set that equal to 0 to find which I have two of my solutions already. So I'm going to go with the solutions. So just now to figure out this last one. q squared equals 0, x squared equals negative 9. x squared to both sides, x equals uh, plus or minus uh, 3i. If you have to both sides, don't forget plus or minus. And you get plus or minus 3i as your third and fourth solutions. Do we have four solutions? One, two, three, four, fourth power. We've got it. This one's really tough. Um, kind of a, just a sneaky problem. Let's go through the normal steps. We we'll graph it. Well, if you graph this, you find there's only a solution x equals 1. So I'll start by subtracting the value of the out, negative 1, negative 1, 7, negative 7, 12, and negative 12. Start out one, wow, this is really long, huh? 1, 0, uh, 0, 7, uh, 7, 0, uh, 0, 12, 12, and 0 is my remainder, yay! That's now I'm going to, oh, sorry, one solution to graph out. Now I'm down to a fourth power here, but I really thought there'd be two more rational zeros. And my only possibilities are 12, 6, 4, 3, 2, 1, plus or minus all those. And, and really, if you look at the graph, there's only a solution at one. I'm just going to, I wonder if that's like a double or maybe a triple solution. Well, I'm just going to take a guess at this. So I'm going to take a one out again. Just see what happens. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Let's get it close. Uh, one, eight. Did I do that right? One. That's one. Uh, one. Okay. Uh, it looks right. So it doesn't look like this is going to work, but let's see what happens. Uh, eight. Ah, it doesn't work, does it? Let's see what I have here. So I have, uh, let's see, this is x, this is x squared. I really had hoped that last thing was going to work. It didn't work out for me. Just to find this little problem. So basically, I'm going to write that as a factor. x to the fourth plus 7x squared plus 12. You know, that almost looks quadratic. Have we ever done something like that in class? Instead of x and x like we normally have, this is x squared, x squared. Have we done that? Factor of 12 to add to 7. 3 and 4, they're both plus. Oh, look at that. I just factored it. We've done that before this year. Just got to apply what you know. Whew, can't believe this worked out. Okay, so we get x squared equals negative 4. So x equals plus or minus 2i. Two, two my solutions. X squared, set this equal to 0, equals negative 3. X squared both sides, of course, plus or minus, you get X equals uh, plus or minus 3i. So I've got uh, 1, so there's only 1, so it's only 1. That was pretty sure X equals 1, and then plus or minus 2i, plus or minus 3i. I have all five solutions. It's to the fifth power. We handled that one. Let's try this one. This one is also a little bit sneaky. So some of these are... Almost do. Can I plot here? So I have a solution at x equals 3. It's kind of funny that the graph bounces right there. Hmm. I wonder why it bounces. When does the graph bounce? That might come into play. Let's see what happens. 3, 
is that one is negative 6, 13, negative 24, 36. And we have C3, uh, negative 3, negative 9, 4, negative 12. That's weird. Okay, negative. That's positive 12, sorry. This would be negative 12. This would be negative 36. Major zero. I thought that would happen. Oh man, now I have something to the third power here. And I one oh wait, I wonder. Seems like there's always a double root when it bounces. Like maybe something's being squared. I wonder if I took out another three, if that would work. That would be really sneaky if this works. Let's see. Three, zero, zero, four, twelve. Can't believe it. I guess that's why that graph bounces. It's a double root right there. It's got two solutions of three. Double solution there. We get uh, constant x, x squared. That's not so bad. That's just x squared plus four. We plot something like that before. We get x equals, uh, x squared equals negative two. So x equals uh, plus or minus i times square root of two. I'm sorry, this is a little mistake there. I'm trying to go a little too fast. This is negative 4. Square root of negative 4, because I take the square root of both sides. Don't forget, plus or minus. Square root of negative 4 is the i comes out, and the 2 is going to come out, so it'd be plus or minus 2i. Is our x there. So we have essentially 3, 3, and plus or minus 2i. We really don't have to say 3 twice, but I know there really are 4 roots, and that helps me out. Let's do this one. Pretty tough. Um, because of the fraction. And uh, if we have time, we'll go over that in class. If not, I probably won't present a test or be more of an extra credit problem. And the last one, um, I would just, I'll give you a hint on this one and let you try it. There's definitely a solution x equals 1, and I'm guessing you might have to take 1 out synthetically 3 times, and then you get down to a quadratic. I'm not sure about that. We may have to factor after one time. Uh, but I'm going to leave that to you and hope that you can finish it off from there. hope that helps a little bit on the homework. And I'm on my way home. I'm in Washington, D.C. on the way back from Boston. I should be home. Hopefully, I fly in at 7.20. Should be home by first period. Hopefully, we'll see.